important uh, structures uh, anatomical structures uh, plays a major role while placing uh, corticobasal implants so this is the nasal floor nasal aperture this is the nasal floor we have to perforate the nasal floor while uh, placing these uh, implants in the anterior maxilla your implants will come through the nasal aperture that is the nasal spine this is the nasal spine area okay you have to perforate the nasal floor here can you see usually the implants in the x-ray will be visible here this is uh, perforating the nasal floor you have to place a corticobasal implant if you can engage your implant through the nasal uh, spine so the stability will be good so this is the uh, the nasal spine area where we have to perforate and place the corticobasal implant so while placing the zygomatic implants the anatomical structures of importance is uh, infraorbital foramen this is uh, the infraorbital foramen usually the zygomatic implants will be placed angulated usually from the first premolar uh, uh, the second premolar area angulated towards the buttress this is the buttress of the zygomatic bone can you see we place sometimes quad zygoma means two zygoma on this side two zygoma on that side and sometimes uh, triple zygoma there is a three zygoma is also uh, placed in the zygomatic implant so if there is need of uh, more stabilization so this is the zygomatic uh, buttress this is the zygomatic buttress so apart from that you can go back to the pterygoid area so i'll just briefly explain about the pterygoid implants so this is the, the lateral pterygoid plate and this is the medial pterygoid plate and this is the hemilor notch okay, can you see this is the hemilor uh, notch and this is a greater collateral foramen on both the sides so this is the maxillary tuberosity so uh, here in the pterygoid plates we have to engage the implant we have to engage the implant in the area between the lateral pterygoid and the medial pterygoid that is area between the lateral and the medial pterygoid that we call it as a pterygopalatine fissure there is a pterygomaxillary fissure in that fissure we have to engage the implant in this direction okay it has to be this way medially uh, it's almost uh, in angulation with the hemilar uh, notch so that is the bone the column of bone uh, where uh, the hemilar notch passes that through that column you have to place the implant here so direction is towards the medial uh, pterygoid plate away from the lateral pterygoid you have to be careful about the lateral pterygoid so the lateral pterygoid will have two heads one is the superior head and the post um, and the, i mean the uh, superior as well as the deeper head so here the main problem is uh, the traversing of uh, internal maxillary artery so internal maxillary artery which is a branch of a carotid artery so it passes uh, in the deep uh, muscle area of a pterygomaxillary fissure here you have to be careful your implant length should be not more than uh, 28 or 30 mm sometimes usually the internal carotid artery lies around 40 mm uh, above means from the tuberosity so you have to be careful not to do osteotomy towards the lateral pterygoid plate okay so when there is atrophy of the maxillary tuberosity usually when there is atrophy of the maxillary tuberosity uh, usually uh, your uh, osteotomy sh uh, should be from the distal root of the second molar angulated medially along the line of hemilar notch okay when the tuberosity is good when you have the bulk of tuberosity is there so you can start from the buccal aspect of the tuberosity angulated 15 to 20 degrees uh, medially and distally and you can go through the uh, you can proceed with the osteotomy so here in the pterygoid implant placement it's a blind technique why i call blind technique is because uh, nobody perfectly knows where exactly is uh, the fusion zone the fusion zone is the area where you are going to engage your implant the fusion zone is the area where you are going to engage the inga implant that is between the medial and the between the medial and the lateral pterygoid this fusion show zone uh, usually you have to locate this mineralized bone through tactile uh, approach tactile approach means so you have to start the osteotomy feel the bone with uh, any kind of uh, pathfinder uh, 
uh, instrument then proceed another further for the osteotomy you have to then you have to engage the implant in the area that is the fusion zone area between the lateral and the medial pterygoid so you can place two implants in the uh, pterygoid region that is the implant the distal implant should be lengthier when compared to the mesial implant you can place the double implants on both the sides engaging through the tuberosity sometimes we call it as a tubero pterygoid implants so sometimes we place the implant traversing the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus also so there are three different steps are there in, the, in this one we place the implant in the pterygoid area because if you can in full mouth cases if you can engage the implants in the pterygoid plates you get maximum stability for the whole framework so there won't be any cantilever effect and your and your uh, uh, processes will have good retention and stability also so in the full mouth cases the anterior nasal sparing engagement as well as in the posterior pterygoid engagement and also in the canine bypass also we can do usually from canine to canine we place six implants in the and both the pterygoids we place a double pterygoids so totally 10 implants we place it in the uh, maxilla that is in full mouth cases when come to the you know, mandible i'll have a brief explanation about the mandible also you can have a look at the um, this is the mental foramen this is the mental foramen you can have a look it lies just below the second premolar or little mesial to the second premolar here on the both the sides will be the same this area you have to be careful while placing the implant the uh, inferior alveolar nerve or inferior alveolar bundle which passes in between this uh, uh, labial as well as the the lingual plates so usually in the usually in the second molar and uh, the first i mean the third molar and the second molar area um, the bundle will pass towards the lingual and in the first molar area it runs towards buccally so that's the way it runs that is the inferior alveolar nerve it passes through and exists to this uh, Canal, that is the mental the, through this foramen that is the mental foramen and uh, it sometimes it gives branches from here also in um, and the, into the muzzle so this is the same thing on both the sides so there is a mental foramen on both the sides while engaging the implant in the anterior mandible it's very easy there won't be any important anatomical structures you can engage till till the base of the mandible you can engage up to 20 mm or 21 mm only thing is you do should not perforate the the lingual aspect of this mandible where there will be uh, lingual plexus of arteries or small capillaries if you are going to perforate the lingual plate there will be anastomosis these arteries uh, will bleed and you, will, you may come across uh, hematoma in the floor of the mouth that should be taken care of and while placing the implant in the molar area if there is atrophy is there you have to angulate the implant how we are going to angulate the implant you have to angulate from buccal to lingual that we call it as narrow bypass technique so we are going to engage the implant in the myeloid ridge, myeloid bone. So we are going to engage the implant in the inferior quarter of the myeloid bone, that is a D2 bone. So and then you can bend the implant for the occlusion. That can be done on the both the sides. So this is the way you are going to place the implant in the maxilla and mandible in the full mode cases. Thank you.